Good morning, I'm teacher Mindy. For those of you who are online, make sure you go to the link and answer the questions for this lesson. Um, and welcome, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm gonna open us up in prayer. Everybody, hold your hands, bow your head. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for bringing each one of us here today. I pray, Lord, that you would speak through me um, as we talk and as I share these parables, Lord. I pray that you be with each student here and each student online, Lord, that they would hear and learn what it is that you have to tell them about each one of these parables, Lord. They would come to understand your love and who you are even more, Father. We ask these things in your name. Amen. All right. So we have three parables to learn about today. So we're going to power through this and we're going to do it. Um, I'm going to kick my shoes off here for a second because I want to make sure you guys are all awake and alive. So stand up. Okay. Before we get started so we can get through all three of these. We're going to do, um, they're called steak eights, but we're just going to go from five today. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off. Go five, four, three, two, one. 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 Okay? So, and then we're going to count down and we'll start with four. Okay? So, five, four, three, two, one. 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 Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. Two, one. One, 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 one. Okay, we all awake? Yeah. All right. Okay, so we are learning about three parables from Matthew 13 today. Um, so each one of these has some good lessons to learn. So the first one is, they're all pretty short, so that's nice. But the first one is, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Okay, what what do you think a treasure is? What's a treasure? Yes. Is it treasure in store or any treasure? Any treasure, in your opinion. What's a treasure? Diamonds, gold, jewels, pearl necklaces. Pearls, golden trophies, and oh, right, gold coins. Okay, very good. Anyone else? I think I saw some hands over here. Jalen. The treasure can be anything of value. Okay, anything of value? Jace, did you have something to add that I saw your hand too? Huh? No? Okay, never mind. Huh? <laughs> um, All right. So, with the treasures, we heard anything of value, gold. Diamonds, Izzy mentioned a bunch of them. Are there any of those, if you had them, that you would you would sell them all for something else? Yeah. Or you would sell everything you own for that treasure, or the gold, or the something of value? Is there anything? Probably. Maybe? I okay. Probably sell, I'd probably sell the, the gold, probably not. No, would you sell what you have for, I said it wrong the first time, would you sell what you have, the things that you own, for that gold, for that treasure? Probably okay. not, unless somebody's giving it free. Probably not. Okay, yeah. Izzy? I like playing for the jewels. Okay. <laughs> Eden would. Izzy. Sorry, so let me get to Izzy, because she has her hand up, okay? Go ahead, Izzy. I would give up everything I own and then use the treasure and jewels and give them to the poor so that people can get what they need and then help out others the poor wouldn't be a thing. Very good, Izzy. All right, so let's find out what happens in here. So we're going to start with the man. It says he discovered a treasure hidden in a field he wasn't looking for. So he wasn't looking for the kingdom of heaven on purpose. He just kind of stumbled across it. So I love this about the parable because it shows us that even people who aren't looking for God can find him, can find his treasure. So uh, an example of somebody in the Bible that wasn't looking for God, but kind of stumbled upon him and found him 
is the Apostle Paul, who originally his name was Saul. And his job was he persecuted Christians. What what does persecute mean? Does anybody know what persecute means? Jake. Not persecute means. It, 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 basically, he was trying to catch Christians doing what he believed was the wrong thing and kill them. Right. So that was his job. That was what he was doing. So um, in Acts, Paul is in prison and he's telling King Agrippa kind of his testimony. And he basically said, yeah, he persecuted Christians. He caused many Christians to be sent to prison. He cast his vote against him to condemn them to death. Um, and many times he punished Christians to get them to curse Jesus. And um, he was so violently opposed to Christians, he even like went to foreign cities to try to find them and, and possibly lead to their death. So one time he was going to Damascus. Um, and at about noon, a, light, a really bright light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shone down on him and his companions, the people that were traveling with him. They fell down and they heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It is useless for you to fight against my will. So Saul has a, a conversation with God and says, who are you, Lord? And the Lord replies, I am Jesus, the one whom you are persecuting. Now get to your feet, for I have appeared to you to appoint you as my servant and witness. Tell people that you have seen me. And I will rescue you from both your own people and the Gentiles. I'm sending you to the Gentiles to open their eyes so they may turn from darkness to light and from power and from the power of Satan to God. So... Saul, who he was before this, after this conversion, God gives him the new name of Paul. But um, during this time, Saul was not looking for God, was he? In fact, he was doing the exact opposite. He was trying to look for people so he could persecute God. Right? So, um, even though he wasn't looking for God, God brought him to himself. And gave him the mission of reaching others and bringing others to God. Uh, I'm sorry, but did you mention somebody named Kameka? Who? Kameka? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. You must have misunderstood me. Uh, no, I think <laughs> you said that Paul was talking to some guy. Oh, who... sorry, King Agrippa. Agrippa. King Agrippa. Wait, what? Oh, okay. So, um, do you think that Paul felt like he needed a savior? Do you think that Paul felt like he needed God, Jalen? No. No. He he was trying to get people not to believe in God, right? So, um, so he was actively doing things against Jesus, and Jesus still saved him. So, Jesus loves everyone and wants everyone to follow him, even those people who are trying to go against. God. He wants them to be saved too. So Paul was like the man in our parable who just kind of stumbled across a great treasure in the field. Okay. Um, what do you think that the great treasure in this parable represents? Jalen. It represents um, Saul being found by God to change his ways. Okay, in a way, it does represent salvation. Um, Izzy? If so, to me, it sounds like it represents as Saul getting the treasure and God getting the looker for him. He's, so he's going to turn into a helper for God and then become the treasure God needs. Okay. Almost. Almost. So, Jason, you want to take a stab at it? Um, I think the treasure... Uh, represents God's love, God's mer mercy. Exactly, very good. The treasure represents a relationship with God. It represents all that God has to give us. 
salvation. Jalen mentioned salvation. Um, love, mercy. It represents all. It represents us being able to spend eternity with God in heaven. That's that's what the treasure is. Okay. Um, so the so the first part. Looking at the first part of the parable again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. So the treasure is the kingdom of heaven. So that's yeah. heaven, us being able to spend eternity with God and God caring enough about us to give us that opportunity mm -hmm. to, to ask for forgiveness of our sins and to have a relationship with God and be able to spend eternity with God. So, um, and that is just about the best treasure we could ever want, right? Amen. So, when the man discovered the treasure, what did he do next? Does anybody remember? It was a while ago that I read it. So, it says, in his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. So... So can you think of something so wonderful that you would sell everything that you have to get it? Jesus. Jesus. That's pretty much the only thing that we would sell everything we own, everything we have for it, right? Okay. So, we've already determined nothing is worth selling all of our stuff for in exchange for, except for the kingdom of heaven. So, uh, can we buy our way into heaven? No. We just talk. How do we get? How do we get to heaven? Well, Jake. Some people will probably go with the simple answer, you die, but it's also... We do have to die to get there. <laughs> it, but uh, it's also, you have to believe in God. Exactly. You have to worship Him. And yeah. accept love, love Him, I guess, now. So it's only through God that we can go to heaven. It's only through accepting God in our hearts, walking with Him, and having a relationship with Him that we get to heaven. Amen. So we can't buy it. It's only through God. It's only through us allowing God to give us that gift to be able to get to heaven. Is he? You have to follow God, and when you're gone and you're with your anyone else, then you just see the gates to heaven and then you walk forward. Very good. So the kingdom of heaven and being freed from our sins is a free gift yes. that God gives us when we believe that he died for our sins. So, in this story, the story of the hidden treasure, the man sold everything he had for the greatest treasure he found. We learn that Jesus can save people even when they're not looking for it, right? And that the kingdom of heaven is worth more than anything we could ever want. So, the next parable, second one, is very similar to this one. Sometimes people lump them together, but we're going to look at them separately because there are different things we can learn from each one. So, let's get to it. So, this is found in Matthew 13, 45, and 46. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. So, the first thing we notice about this one that makes it different from the first one is it says, like a merchant on the lookout for pearls. So, this merchant was looking for pearls, looking for treasure, right? So, unlike the guy in the first parable who just stumbled upon it, this person was actually looking for treasure, for pearls. So, 
So. So, you all are lucky enough and blessed enough to come to church every week and learn about Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. But does everybody have that? Is everybody lucky enough to have that? Do any of you know somebody maybe at school, maybe even somebody in your family that doesn't go to church or doesn't really have an opportunity to go to church? I have someone that doesn't go to church, and I don't think God is like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, Izzy? My friend Audrey doesn't go to church, and I know that because every time we play tag or love monster tag, <coughs> we play time out before everyone can even come to church. So it's like eight till eight to be three when we let the game and play. Okay. That's how I know she doesn't. Well, sometimes, do, do we make mistakes? I know I make mistakes. Mm -hmm. All right, so we can go to church and still make mistakes and still do things at school or at work that might make people question whether or not we go to church, right? Yep. So, um, and there are a lot of people out there that maybe just don't know, haven't really had anybody invite them to church, don't know where they would go to church, maybe don't really know where one is or have any friends that would take them. Might be a scary thing to kind of do on your own, right? Just kind of go to church. So there are people out there that are looking. They're looking for God, right? So um, there are people that, um, that we might see at school, at work, that are very lonely. They don't know how. Um, they don't know God. They don't know how to follow God. They feel lost. They might feel like something is missing in their lives. So when that happens, they often go searching for something to make them feel like they belong. Some of them might not even know that they're searching for God. They just know that there's an emptiness in their life. And they're searching for something to fill that emptiness. Um... Can you think of something people may turn to as they try to to find something to fill up to make them feel less empty, to make them feel better? Izzy. They will probably if they didn't know about God, then they probably try and look for something they actually want. But if they do follow God, they might actually try and find God themselves. Okay. Very good. Some people may try to fill that emptiness maybe with um possessions. Maybe if they feel like, oh, if I had a nicer car, I would feel more whole. I would feel better. If I, if I looked better, if I had nicer clothes. Um, some people might even look to like exercise and fitness. If, if I, I felt better, if I looked better, then maybe I would feel better about myself. Yeah. Right? TJ. What if you wanted something that you needed to afford and you didn't have enough money? Okay. So... Some people may even look at that and say, I need to get a better job, I need to work. So maybe pursuing getting more money, making more money. If I had more money, I'd be happy, I'd feel more complete. I wouldn't feel empty. So that's a good point. Some people might look for more money. Except the coronavirus means you can't sometimes go to your job and then you need to afford a computer. Yes, the coronavirus did make it difficult for a lot of us and that's why a lot of people look for things from their home tv internet yeah that's whatever they can access to, from buy. Home to make themselves feel better that's why you need to buy so so people look all over the place for something to fill them up but there's only one thing that will make us feel like we belong yeah. What do you think that one thing is? What's the one thing that will make us feel like we belong? Izzy? Jesus and our family and friends. Amen. Very, very good. God and then God uses our family and friends to make us feel that way too. So, great. the great news is that those who really look for Jesus will find him. So in Jeremiah 29, 13, it says, if you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. It means if you look for me with your, with your whole heart, you will find me. So we learn from this parable that people who are looking for the truth with their 
whole hearts will find God in the kingdom of heaven. So what does the parable say the man does when he finds the pearl or finds the kingdom of heaven? So what did the man do when he found the pearl? Jake. Um, the, the man who was looking for it? Yeah. What did he do when he found the pearl? Oh, he probably took it. He took it, and then what did he do with it? Do you remember what he did with it, Izzy? He sold everything he owned and bought the land. So he sold everything he owned and he bought the pearl. So this one. So. So he sold everything he owned and bought the pearl. Um, in the parable of the hidden treasure, we learn that salvation is a free gift. We don't have to pay anything or do anything aside from believe in Jesus and ask him to forgive our sins in order to get to go to heaven. But there is more to it than that. And this part can get a little tricky to understand. Um, but I know you all are smart, so we're gonna we're gonna do this, right? Okay, so is so we said you can't buy your way into the kingdom of heaven. But is there a cost to getting into the kingdom of heaven? Does anybody understand the that Jace? cost is giving God your love. Okay. Very good. The cost is giving God all of our love. We have to put God above of everything in our lives. We have to put God above our parents. Yep. Okay? But when we do that, God gives us more than enough love to give to our parents. Yes. But if we don't put God first, we're not always going to feel like we have all the love we need to give to our parents. So that's why we've got to put God first. Okay, we've got to put God above our friends. Um, above anything else. Our, our job, school, our favorite shoes, whatever it is. Right? So, following Jesus is not always easy. Sometimes, we might be teased or left out. Has anybody been teased or left out because somebody found out that they they follow God or love God? I love God. Okay. Have you ever felt like people teased you or they left you out because of that? Kind of. When I was in preschool. Okay. Kind of. So I know I've had like coworkers who felt like they couldn't tell me things because they didn't think I would understand because I was a Christian. So, oh, I, I had a friend that was a different religion mm -hmm. that was like, uh, I forgot what the religion, but he, they thought I would be like too weird because I was Christian. Okay, and cause right. Because I wasn't invited to her parties or anything because I had like Catholic thing. So sometimes we get judged because yeah. we follow Christ. Sometimes we get left out of things. We get we don't get invited to certain birthday parties, certain events. Um. So we will have to make hard decisions to follow follow Christ sometimes. We'll have to decide, you know what, even though so-and-so might not invite me to her birthday party, I'm still going to follow God because I know that that's more important than that birthday party. Um, sometimes we might have to do things that might be a little scary. You know, it is scary to be left out sometimes to be that person that, the, the one person that doesn't get invited or the one person that's not friends with certain people. Um, and we may lose friends over our faith, right? Um, salvation is a free gift from God, but it still costs us a lot, right? So it still costs us everything. We have to put everything or we have to put God above everything. So it costs us everything. We have to kind of sacrifice all those other things in our life to follow God. Um, so when we choose to follow Jesus and let him cleanse us of our sins, we have to love him more than we love anyone in the whole world. 
Okay. So Jesus and God comes first before your parents or before your grandma? Yes. So you have to love God more than you love your parents. Who here loves their parents quite a bit? Okay. Me too. Sometimes. <laughs> I like my parents. And and that is the one thing. God will never let us down. Yeah. And and that's why it is so important to have God as that as that first. And that's why I said and having God first in our lives makes it easier. Even in those times where we might not agree with our parents or really like what they're telling us we need to do at the time. Like maybe, you know, you need to do your homework right now. We might not like that, right? We may want to do other things at that time. I have a bunny rabbit that is more than baby. And what? I have, I have a bunny rabbit that is more than baby. Okay. It's more than baby, no more Yes. And I want to play with the bunny every time. So okay. Everybody would. So, and I bet you love that bunny too, right? So you need to love God more than you love that bunny, right? All right, our parents have to love Jesus more than they love us. And again, that's what gives them the capacity to love us the way they do. Because if they didn't get filled with all of God's love, there, I mean, you know, I think I have pretty good kids, but there are times when if it wasn't for the love of God inside me. <laughs> um, that may be my fault. <laughs> <laughs> right? And I'm sure my parents, I know my parents did the same thing about me. So. Yes. So, um, but think about how much you love your family and how much they love you. So you love your parents a whole lot. They love you a whole lot, but that's how much more we need to love Jesus. Okay. So like the man in the parable of the pearl, we have to give up everything. We have to sell everything we have for that kingdom of heaven. So, although sometimes we may need to get rid of some of the things in our lives that lead to sin, it means that Jesus must be more important than anything else in our lives. He sacrificed his death for us. Exactly. So he said so, us more than he loves us. So he loves us more than anybody else ever could. So he has to be more important to us than our families. He has to be more important than our friends. He has to be more important to us than school, sports, video games. I know a lot of you like video games. God has to be more important than video games. What? Oh, okay. He has to be more important than our favorite toy. Mm -hmm. Okay. My favorite toy is Mickey Mouse Okay. Do you love God more than you like that toy? Yes. Okay. Amen. Amen. So, being a Christian is not about following rules or just getting saved for our sins. Being a Christian means we love Jesus because he loves us. When we love someone, we show them we love them. We show our parents we love them by hugging them. What's another way that you show your parents that you love them? Saying I love you. Saying you love them. Very, very good. Izzy. Giving them nice things like hugs and kisses. Okay, giving them nice things like hugs and kisses. Um, so we show our parents that we love them by obeying them too, right? By listening to them. Maybe by helping out, by doing chores around the house that they ask us to, right? Those are, so serving and doing things. And that's one of the ways we can show God that we love him too, is by serving him. Nala. You can also help your parents wash the dishes. That is a great way to show your parents that you love them. So. So we show Jesus we love him by keeping him first in our lives. So, and we just shared a bunch of ways that we can keep Jesus first in our lives by thinking of how we love our parents. We can 
do things for others. We can serve God. We can help out um, maybe like in church or feeding the homeless or doing things like that. There's a lot of things we can do to serve God and to take care of his people. One time I saw a short and it was one man making a bunch of food for the poor. Well, I had to keep all of that. Okay. So that's definitely a way to show God that you love him, right? Next right. Christmas, um, I'm going to give food to the charity and the poor. Okay, very good. Good job. Food to people. Nala. You can also show respect. By, so God made all of us. So everybody, even that person at school who bugs you like nothing else, mm -hmm. God made that person. Yeah. Right? So by showing that person respect, by showing respect to others, we're respecting God's children. So yes, that is a, a great way to show God love. Um, oh, one time I saw a short, there was a kid kicking a pack around the street, and then two video kids were just teasing him, and when they, and when one of them was about to give him a cup to play in the little dust that he had, he just threw it on the ground. And then later on, he had money, and then he saw a poor man, he put in the tiny little dust bag, and he gave it to the man, and when he looked in his eyes, he saw the money. And then the little kid just threw money at the kids that were mean to him and gave him a dollar okay. car. Very good. Okay. So, we're gonna, there's one more and it's really, really quick. So, the last one is the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down, and sorted the good fish into crates, but threw the bad ones away. This is what it will be like at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the good people, from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace there, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So this parable is really similar to one that you studied last week. Does anybody remember which one that you studied last week that talked about like throwing bad stuff away and keeping the good stuff? Um, if I'm correct, it was about the farmer who planted seeds and then enemy, uh, the enemies planted weeds and then the weeds were like choking the plants. Very good. So it was the weeds and I think it was the wheat, right? So he, he saved, they would save the wheat and the good stuff and put the weeds into the fiery furnace and, and burn it, right? Hmm. So, so this is just the same thing. So they're gonna keep the good fish and get rid of the bad fish right, in this parable. So it's, um, so we learned that those who follow Jesus get to go to the kingdom of heaven, right? Those who don't, don't, right? So for those of us that love God, it's good news. That's pretty much that one. All right. So I'm going to close out with prayer. Thank you for those of us again online that joined us and for all of you that came here this morning. Yes. Let's close this off with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much again just for all that you gave us in the Bible, Lord. It's sometimes too much even to get all out and to share and to teach because you just gave us so much wisdom and love in your word and we thank you so much for sharing this with us we pray lord that you would help us to remember this week how loved we are by you and how much you did so that we can spend eternity with you in heaven thank you father amen, amen.